exposure to the viewers' comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. If you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it. If you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about, it's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. Buckle up, beautiful people, because this is going to be a bumpy comments video. Let's get started. I'm going to start off on a positive note from uh, member Daryl Bennett. Thank you very much for your support, Daryl. He says, thank you, Jason Matthew Glass. Very good human conservation, a valuable situation for the heart-pounding learning process of self-learning by correct sentence structure. Well, I appreciate those words, uh, Daryl. And one thing, I, again, I got a shout out to this guy right here. We've done one workshop together. He keeps coming back. He keeps leaving comments. Not only that, but this individual will actually send me emails from time to time saying some very kind words, wishing me well, thanking me, so on and so forth. So much love uh, to you, Daryl. Thank you very much for being a part of this community. You bring a light to it. Thank you. Next comment comes from La Salaman. La Salaman. And they say, simple. The state legislature passes traffic laws. Police enforce them. Law requires you to get out of your vehicle if asked by an officer of the law who has stopped you on a public road. No, a license is not a contract. Yes, a license is a contract. Everything is contract. A license is a paid permit that enables you to do something in the fiction system that would otherwise be illegal. It is a license that gives you permission to drive an automobile on the state streets and highways. There's no contract involved in the enforcement of traffic laws. Yes, there is. There most certainly is. Everything is contract. In any event, if you have a problem with the arrest procedures, you have to either make a complaint with the law enforcement agency or go to court. That's it. No, that's not it. That's what you do in the fiction system, which you seem to be have a good grasp of, which, I mean... I, if that works out for you, cool. But that has nothing to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parse syntax, grammar. And obviously, you don't know the first thing about this grammar, so I'm not really sure what you're doing here anyways. But thanks for taking the time to uh, drop by and give us pearls of wisdom of the obvious. Next comment comes from Sovereign Man, who has been blocked, by the way. One method she could have used is to bill the officer. Yeah, I already went over that com uh, that comment, but the person who just left the other comment responded to this and said, how could she bill the officer? Just make up a bill and handed it to him? Totally unenforceable in any court. The woman's delusional. No, it's not true. It's not unenforceable in any court. It's just not enforceable in a foreign vessel in dry dock. You know... La Salaman, those court houses you walk into that have the yellow fringe flags with the chickens on the finales, you know, those foreign vessels in dry dock. But I don't know how much you know about maritime admiralty law and, and things like that. Next comment comes from Dev August. And, oh yeah, I did this in the last one. The reason why I posted this is to give a response from the same individual, La Salaman, who says, you required under law, you required under the law of most states to exit the vehicle if the officer orders you to do, orders you do do so. They said do do. Failure to comply is a separate criminal offense in most states. That's right. So in the fiction, if you don't do what the authority tells you to do, 
you're a criminal. It doesn't matter if you haven't hurt anyone, you haven't harmed anyone. It doesn't matter. You're still a criminal if you don't do what the hell you're told. And La Sala, man, we are so grateful that you were here to uh, educate us on this scenario because none of us would even know that if not for you. Next comment comes from Dev August, and they say, Jason, thanks for the video. I now understand why you will not talk about the contract, banking, postal, flag, mechanics, etc. But anyway, I think that if people would understand that knowledge first, then they would have more motivation to learn the grammar. Well, I'm well aware of that concept, Dev August. And I will say that I know that I could get more viewers if I would do that. But I will not put other people at risk or danger for the sake of my own gain. It's not something I've ever done since I started this channel. I have focused on the grammar. If you're serious enough about this, you will learn the grammar first. If not, oh well. I guess you're shite out of luck then. Because those mechanics will only come after I can verify that you know the grammar. Period. End of story. Other people may want to make money off of this. I'm certainly not one of them. I mean, because I'm considering closing this channel down in less than a month because of that. So definitely not in this for that reason. Next comment comes from Dennis Thompson. And they say, hello, Jason. From Dennis Michael, but please call me Dennis. This is 100% serious question, not trying to be a blank to you. Okay, now, here's another individual that just doesn't read the terms and conditions of the comments field. They use curse words. I can forgive, you know, this. Um, but seriously, folks, how many of you are even considerate enough to honor the terms and conditions, one of which is please don't curse or use foul language? It's not too much to ask, is it? But humble question. All flag banking postal mechanic would be written in Babel. That is not true. That is not correct. That is a wrong assumption, a false premise right off the bat. Because my flag constitution is written in correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. And by my, okay, stop and correct. It's not my flag constitution. It is the constitution of the 1 by 1.9 flag, the grammar flag, the Title IV flag. It is written in correct sentence structure, and I have taken that flag constitution from David Wynn Miller and corrected his mistakes, and now there is a flag constitution that I use, that I corrected, and it's written in correct sentence structure, not Babel. So no, you are 100% wrong. So understanding it as long as we have definitions, write dictionary. Definitions is the, again, the wrong term. Because definition means no finite contract. You would use the word finite mean. And again, this goes back to the grammar, Dennis Thompson. If you would get closure on the grammar, you wouldn't probably even be asking this right now. From them, as it, their documents I could learn within the Babel fiction side. The different mechanics, or are you saying we would have to rewrite their documents? Like David said, he wrote, rewrote Bible, etc. So I'd have full context of the real meaning within the system. Dennis Michael, to, or Dennis, sorry, you said to call you Dennis. I apologize. Dennis, if you want to rewrite fiction babel laws or whatever, that, that's entirely up to you. Um, not rewrite. You would use the word translate if you want to do that. It's not necessary, but I mean, if that's what you choose to do, if that's how you choose to spend your now space, translating fiction statutes and laws and things like that into correct sentence structure, go ahead. But first, you have to learn the grammar, which I'm pretty sure you haven't. Thank you. I will rewrite my Babel half-legal advice from other posts. But was just trying to get past people talking in chat. I don't mean to disrespect your vessel in, in that post. Uh, no, no, I don't, I don't think you no-no-spected me. You're fine. And if you're serious about the grammar, you seem to be a bit serious but you seem to be a bit lacking in fundamentals, contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen if you really are serious and apply for a workshop. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and uh, we'll get you started. Another one from Sovereign Man and they say, also to address the thing that you stated at the beginning of your video, 
the word sovereign. I do not use the word sovereign in the traditional sense. I use it as I have stated in my bio, using the Oxford English Dictionary. One who has supremacy or rank above or authority over others. A superior ruler, governor, lord, or master. Okay. Uh, frequently applied to the deity in relation to created things. And later used suggested, suggestive of sense. In the hierarchy of the world, man created corporations and corporations do not have authority over man. Thus, man has an authority or supreme rule over a corporation. Another way to look at it is one can only be a free man or a slave. There's the logical fallacy, false dilemma. I am not a slave because no one who has made that claim upon me has had valid evidence. Slavery is in opposition to sovereignty. So let me ask you this, sovereign man, and I know you can't answer because you're blocked. What type of mentality does it take to want to have, to be ranked above other people, to have authority of, over other people, to rule or govern other people? If that's your thing, that's your thing, I guess. And if you can get people to buy into that BS, cool. But that definitely has no place here. And as you can see, folks, these sovereign sits, these sov sits, I'll call them sov sits in a cheeky manner. They just want to argue and argue and type out like comments that are like chapter length. It's unreal. It's without fail that that is the way that they respond. They're just like, what do they, what do they call that nowadays? Mansplaining? And now they want to, again, do what they continue to, they say, this seems pointless, pointlessly aggressive, the way I was giving Kuliana to them. You can interpret my words however you may wish, but that doesn't grant you the right to make your interpretation my interpretation. Uh, that never happened. And I don't participate with the uh, word rights. Rights come from an authority, and there is no authority over me, certainly not you. So, uh, don't tell me what to do, man. <laughs> the Oxford English Dictionary is not the author of what I've written. Oh, I beg to differ. You said, sovereign man, that you used, the, the, the meanings of your words were taken from the Oxford English Dictionary. So. You didn't construct the meanings of those words. Oxford English Dictionary did. So who is the authority of the meanings of your words? Oxford English Dictionary. So you're wrong. You may have written what you wrote, like you are the author of whatever you wrote in your fiction babble document, but you're not the author of the closure of those words. The Oxford English Dictionary is. Do you get it? If we didn't have dictionaries and everyone has their own definition for every single word, then nothing can be explained. Everyone would have write up their own definitions. That is correct. Although the middle part, nothing can be explained, is totally incorrect. And if you would ever decide to learn correct sentence structure, which I highly doubt you would, then you would know this. But you have zero knowledge of correct sentence structure. Thus, that's why you keep going on and on and on like this. And I'm certainly was no sweat off my brow to block you. Oh, to touch on the definitions thing. Again, definition is no finite contract. I use the word finite mean. Everyone who uses correct sentence structure, I encourage them to create their own correct sentence structure dictionary with their own correct sentence structure finite means. If they use the mechanics taught in correct sentence structure, i.e. they parse A, the particles of the words that they're giving closure to, Go to the earliest nativity root meanings of those words and then imbue whatever, you know, other color or uh, not color, but uh, other meaning to the words and then put them in the dictionary. While the exact wording of your finite meaning might be different than mine, the overall meaning, overarching meaning of the words will be very similar. And if you and I contract, then we would just have to agree on the common meanings of those terms and then adjust our dictionaries accordingly. It's that simple, it works out, it works out. But someone like this would not have a clue how that works. And then they go on to say, also your reply uses the false dilemma fallacy. 
stating that I can only be here to promulgate fiction common law babble or learn correct sentence structure. Actually, that is not the false dilemma fallacy. Um, what I'm saying is, my terms and conditions is a vessel. It's a correct sentence structure vessel. The only reason you would have to be here is to learn correct sentence structure. And that goes back to the beginning of the channel. That's the main purpose of this channel. If you are here talking about anything else for any length of breadth of time like you are, and it's not pertaining to correct sentence structure, then you're going outside the terms and conditions of the channel. So it's not a false dilemma. It's terms and conditions which you are blatantly ignoring repeatedly again and again and again. That's why you got blocked. So if I'll add a third thing, you're either here to learn correct sentence structure, promulgate common law, or troll. It's one of those three. Koskoff says, and they're quoting me, if you use the Oxford as the author of your word meanings, then who is the authority of those meanings? Do you know Oxford is? And then they say, you are making a mistake about language. Language evolves. Usages of words change. Dictionaries are considered living documents in such that as usages change or new terms are used by people and their new definitions get added to the dictionary. I comprehend what this individual is saying, all right, in a fiction sense. But this is not a fiction channel. This is a channel based on fact, the fact of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, technology. So in that context, through that lens, this person is 100% wrong because I have never known a book to be alive because in my dictionary, the book that governs my construct, a live creature is a creature that breathes breath. As far as I know, books don't breathe. They don't have lungs. So that's a pretty ludicrous thing to say. I've never seen a breathing, living dictionary. There's no life to a dictionary. Dictionaries just get modified down the line. Modification upon modification upon modification. The whole fiction system is based upon modification. So I don't even need to read the rest of their comment. Because it's just fiction system bullshit brought by a fiction system adherent. Now, if they're interested in learning correct sentence structure, they're in the right place. But I highly doubt they are. Uh, they're just here to argue, it seems to me. Uh, why would they leave a comment here if not to mitigate or argue or to provoke? See, once again, failing to use normal language is your issue, telling me what my issues are. Now, I have issues. Too bad they didn't bring tissues. Language being live or dead just means if it is in use or not. Ever heard of a go live? A TV show can go live. A service can go live. Again, Koskoff, in the context of correct sentence structure, this is completely incorrect. You're talking about fiction terms, the world you live in, not factual terms, the world I live in. If, as you claim, no one knows your language, I never claim that no one knows it. There are quite a few people that know it now ever since I started teaching it six years ago. So, again, you're wrong. How are we replying? Who's we? You got a mouse in your pocket or are you talking about the voices in your head maybe? I don't know. If you don't understand English, how are you replying? If I don't understand English, if no one else knows your magic code, how is it useful? It isn't. Well, of course it's not use useful to you because you don't know jack shit about it. And I'm not sure why you're here, bro. Now, for those of you out there that think that I'm getting aggravated or anything like that, because a lot of people seem to think that when I reply in my comments, I am literally sitting here having the time of my life, getting great joy out of these comments, just because it brings me back down to earth to see how, how would they used to say, it? the other side lives. How people so ensconced in the fiction system that they can't see any possibilities outside of it. And if someone comes to them with something as alien and strange as quantum grammar, they sort of fear it because they don't understand it. And so they criticize it and condemn it and dismiss it, just like these people. Or they ignore it like sovereign man. Ignored all the correct sentence structure stuff and just focused on their main interest, which was common law. So it's it's just a common theme. And no, I'm not I'm not getting pissed or nothing. This is great fun to me. All right, now we got some good comments from uh, 
member Razvan, and he says, the kid's so cool. Looks like he even did his homework all the way. I looked up the etymology of the word vehicle and its shipping term synonymous with transportation, carriage, and convenience in the fiction. Soft citizen community is huge, but just like any others, they're vulnerable to the D and Kruger effect, which comes with the fail-safe mechanism of identity protective behavior that can be triggered by any kind of change to a habit. Very, very interesting and astute observations, Razvan. Thank you very much. I appreciate your very intelligent uh, comments here. Please continue with them. Next comment comes from Harris Diz, and they say, can an officer communicate or even enforce a law if he and she is not a lawyer? Uh, in the fiction, anything is possible, Harris Diz. Once again, if you knew correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, you would really realize how rhetorical your question actually is. Next comment comes from the Learner 1000, and they say, the kid is lucky he didn't get Buford T. Justice as the officer. This is a good learning exercise to streamline one's knowledge and language skills with a solid storyline to any law officer. However, despite the kid was well collected, it still could have gone wrong if the officer wanted to. Reason why it went well, in my opinion. Private property, a cop has no right to be there unless someone called and reported a crime. No right. Here we go again with this rights thing. Whose rights are you talking about? Where do these rights come from? These mysterious rights. As the kid said, no crime was committed, no damage was done to property or any person, although the kid had no right to be in that private property either. I'm surprised the officer didn't press the issue. I do disagree that correct sentence structure would have further helped as the fiction law enforcement agencies are all under the presumption that people have a contract with the Department of Motor Vehicles. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to that sentence again. They say, I do disagree that correct sentence structure would have further helped. Now, to me, that sounds like this individual doubts the potency of correct sentence structure because they disagree that using it would have helped in that scenario. So either they don't know it or they know it and have used it and have failed. It's obviously, quite obviously, not the second option. It's the first option. This individual lacks critical fundamentals uh, knowledge of correct sentence structure. And they go on through their next comments to actually prove this. And they just go off the chain with mitigation and trying to argue with me and saying, you know, just like throwing stuff back at me, like, Sort of like someone throwing shit at a wall and trying to get it stick. They ended up getting blocked too. Because they said I was wrong and that I was assuming that they doubt the potency of correct sentence structure. Read that again. I do disagree that correct sentence structure would have further helped. Sounds like a whole heap of doubt to me. Which is normal for someone that doesn't have closure on the grammar. I, on the other hand, have 100% certainty that it would have helped and actually been more efficient. This is the danger of any police officer towards anyone. It's their expectations that you have this contract with the DMV. Overall, this kid is very lucky. I've seen worse for just not having fishing license out in Montana where there is no one around and the guy trying to forge food for himself. Well, what, what they say here, it's their expectations that you have this contract with the DMV. I've explained this countless times as well, the way I do things like that, where I have a fiction license and a C pass C treaty towing it as a salvage. So I have the stuff that the fiction Vasily wants to see, but then I also have my stuff that takes authority over those contracts, and I explain it to them. And it's never failed. But I'm sure the Learner 1000 wouldn't know anything about that because, again, they lack, they lack critical, fundamental, correct sentence structure knowledge. And they respond, I don't doubt correct sentence structure, your assumption. Sounds like he doubted it or she doubted it. I don't know if it's a girl or a boy. 
Sorry if I misgendered you. It sounds like doubt to me. I simply disagree with you saying that it would have helped, i.e. that you doubted it. As correct sentence structure wasn't used in this case, and the incident went in favor of the kid. And this is the whole thing with mitigation in the fiction system. Semantics. People like this try to use semantics to their advantage. Wordplay. Well, I said I disagreed the correct sentence structure would have helped the situation. That doesn't mean I doubt the potency of it. Okay. <clears throat> so don't take offense to my opinion. Don't tell me what to do, bro. Or sister. Don't tell me what to do. No offense taken, by the way. I'm having the time of my life listening to this gobbledygook. As I expressed it honestly and kindly. Well, I'm glad you expressed it honestly, as opposed to all the other time where you just pr perhaps expressed it dishonestly. Because if you have to point out, well, to be honest, what does that mean? That you were honest all the other times? Now, see, I'm doing the same thing. I'm playing word games with semantics. I'm getting into the spirit of things. I better pull myself back here. As far as kindly, kindly, honestly and kindly are both non-tangible contract words with particles of negation at the end. And I know that we're talking in uh, fiction babble right now, but I didn't construe anything this individual said as kind. I certainly didn't. As I said, even though I was joking, that if the kid had an officer like Buford T. Justice or some cocky officer, this would have gone wrong and not in favor of the kid or anyone for that matter. Even if you had closure on correct sentence structure, you or anyone can never predict how the officer will behave or his state of mind. Are we still friends? From my knowledge, you were never a friend to begin with. I've never met you. I've offered you multiple times to have consultations with me, to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen, to apply for workshops and such, to share your correct name, but you have never, ever, ever taken me up on those offers. Silence is consent, I guess. So by de default judgment, you don't want to talk to me. You just want to hide behind the Learner 1000 username and mitigate in a comments field, which... I finally, duh, I'm so thick sometimes, I finally realized that and had to block you. So we were never friends to begin with, so that is not an issue. Um, even if you had closure on correct sentence structure, you can never predict. No, I never said anyone could ever predict how an officer would react. But what I can do is take jurisdiction over myself, and I know that I have dealt with friendly officers. I've dealt with angry military personnel. Um angry Vassalese, and each time I've been successful in navigating safely with correct sentence structure. I have that experience because I'm that confident with the grammar. Of course, you, the Learner 1000, probably wouldn't, uh, probably can't like wrap your head around that because you've never done it, number one. And number two, you don't have closure on the grammar. And here's the proof that the Learner 1000 does not have closure on the grammar. For the volition of the law officer is with the now position of the honor with the peace and neutrality by the law officer, comma space, Buford hyphen T, and then uh, brackets justice, period. Oh, folks. I have said many, many times that correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar is sacred to me. I never use it to joke, and that's why I'm so critical of those individuals that use it in a sort of like casual lazy way like colon how hyphen r hyphen u hyphen today question mark i never do stupid shit like that mine is always very on point very articulate no joking around in it at all or at least very 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 little first of all this individual is making a claim for someone else that's the number one no-no you will only make a claim for yourself. <clears throat> Strike number one. Strike number two comes. They're making a claim for a fictional character that doesn't exist. So they're off there in La La Land. <clears throat> number two. So let's look at the structure itself. For the volition of the law officer. Oh, look at that. A vow in front of a consonant. No contract. So for the volition of the no contract. <clears throat> Strike three. Is... With the now position, now is 
non-tangible contract, particle of negation, N-O, <clears throat> fourth one, of the honor, with the peace and neutrality, by the law officer, another uh, particle of negation, O in front of F, <clears throat> strike five, and then Buford hyphen T. What does that mean? I guess that's a name, but again, all right, we'll leave it at five. Five mistakes there. This individual lacks critical knowledge, and I hope to hell that they never try to use correct sentence structure in a situation like that, because they most certainly will probably have a very negative and uncomfortable outcome. Next comment comes from Joshua Hardway, and they say, for the claimant's cognition of the sensation with the facts is with the thanks by the claimant. Now, this attempt, I, I commend you on your attempt. I will not be as harsh on you because I know you, you in your other comments, you're very humble and um, you exercise humility as opposed to the learner 1000 who does not. So what I will suggest for you is that in your sentence, you use the word claimant. If you're going to use the word claimant, then there, there must be a claim in the sentence. So you'd be like, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the. You have to state what you're claiming. If the word claimant is in there, the word claim must also be in there. Also, there are only two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb. For the facts of the facts verb. You would not have three. You have three in front of the verb. That is incorrect. It is not correct sentence structure. Also, you don't have a period at the end of the sentence. So, great try though. If you're serious about this grammar, Joshua Hardaway, contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and apply for a workshop. Next comment comes from Jay Rumbleseed, and they say, Now what happens when those in authority subject their fellow man to fictitious conveyance of language, subjective interpretation, legal maxims, Henry VIII clauses, legal fictions, abusive judicial discretion, the shifting sand of common law aids in the perpetration of de facto government, and legislative courts uses war as a legal base for social engineering, deceives us with the geometry of the courtroom setting and law of the flag. Jay Rumbleseed, by the content of your question, which is rhetorical by my perception, I can tell that you have little to no closure on correct sentence structure because you're talking about complete and utter fiction nonsense. What happens when those in authority subject their fellow man? Well, you get the society we have today, I guess, would be a good answer to that. And more. Somewhere in the Constitution, we have to stop and correct the wrong concerning common law. The common law, with its heavy reliance upon case law, has been at fast track for abusive judges fails as long as term solution to providing stable, well-written laws. Therefore, we restate Amendment 7 simply to forbid case law. J. Rumbleseed. If you truly, which I know you don't, I'm just being theoretical here. If you had closure on correct sentence structure, you would never suggest something like that. Why would you want to use fiction ideas? Fiction, the fiction system, the legal system, the Constitution, all that stuff is rotten from the get-go. It's rotten from its foundation. So anything you build on, it's going to be rotten. If one wants to be autonomous and use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar as a technology to help them become autonomous, they have to extricate themselves from that rotten foundation and start new for themselves. That's the best way I can put it. It ain't easy. And not very many people do it. You could be one, but as yet, I don't think I've ever received an application from you for a workshop. So again, hit me up at the email address at the bottom of your screen if you're serious. We'll finish up here with the Learner 1000, their final comment published on my channel, and they say, hmm, and they're quoting me here. Yes, my perception is the same. You certainly lack critical correct sentence structure fundamentals. You did not syntax the last sentence in my comment as I asked which I did. I said, if you want to prove that you have fundamental knowledge of correct sentence structure, please syntax the last sentence in this comment. That's what I said. 
So perhaps you don't know what syntax is. And then they said, copy and paste what you want me to syntax. I missed it. But because I missed what you asked me to do, you twist it to perhaps I don't know what syntax is. Really? Presumption, assumption on your part. So actually now it's not only a critical lack of basic fundamental correct sentence structure skills, it's also a critical lack of forensic skills because they're not reading my comments. Like I read everyone's comments and I'm very careful and respectful and honorable to read the whole comment unless they start talking nonsense in my view, of course. So you see what I mean by how argumentative this person is getting? They are not, I'm giving them plenty of opportunities to exercise humility, to step back and say, maybe I ought to look at this for a minute. Maybe I ought to look at it from a different angle, but no, no, no. They go on telling me what I'm doing and trying to defend what they're doing. Anyone can copy and paste the things you shared. No, sir, I did not. I didn't say you did. I said anyone can copy and paste the things that you put on there. Not specifically you. Again, critical forensic knowledge. By the way, consequence contains a particle of negation. I know. And then he put con. And there you go. There's more proof that they lack critical correct sentence structure fundamental knowledge. Con is not a particle of negation. Con means the same thing as CO. It means together. And in the word consequence, that is not the particle of negation. I put it in the sentence so that you are aware that I know the flow structure of correct sentence structure, but you decided to slam me on it even though I can show you the fundamentals. Nice. <laughs> so now they're not only being uh, sarcastic, they're being condescending. And I'm just not going to have that on here. I mean, I'm giving back the energy that this individual was giving me. Uh, they obviously find it difficult to take criticism. They obviously find it uh, offen uh, not offensive, but uh, it makes them feel some sort of way, as the kids say, to be criticized. But the Learner 1000, you do lack critical, basic, fundamental knowledge of correct sentence structure. And you also, by you not reading comments carefully, lack critical forensics knowledge. So I would highly recommend, this is my last suggestion to you as a tutor, because you are a guest aboard this vessel. I am a correct sentence structure grammar tutor. This is my channel, you're a guest here. Well, you were a guest here until I kicked you off. This is my final suggestion to you. I would highly recommend practicing humility. Take a step back. I do leave the door open. You can contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and apply for a workshop or at least apply for a 10 to 15 minute consultation. Step up to the plate on the geometric level playing field of video communication. Confront me face to face and say what you got to say. Balls in your court. Go ahead and email me. You won't. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.